Today we're going to look at two particles connected by uh, a string and seeing how they operate together. So I have two particles here, P and Q. P has mass 3 kilograms and Q has mass 5 kilograms and they're connected by a light and extensible string. Uh, the light means that we can ignore its mass for any calculation purposes and inextensible means that whenever Q moves it's going to drag P exactly the same velocity and whenever p moves it's going to take q at exactly the same velocity the same thing with accelerations they can't be different and um, because if it extended that's when they could be different so you'll only ever see in extensible strings in a level mechanics so first of all just to check what happens if i pull q here with some force it drags p along with it same velocity same acceleration if i try pulling p p will move along at the same velocity same acceleration as q um, it says it's a smooth horizontal surface, so I can ignore friction in this question. So I don't have to worry about the vertical force in this case, which would create friction. Uh, all I have to worry about is that particle Q is being pulled by a horizontal force of 16 newtons. Um, so all I have to do is mark on that horizontal force. 16 newtons going this way. 16 newtons. Um, now we can see that... Uh, Q is going to be pulled, what's going to happen to P? Well, it's difficult to work out one particle and the next particle, so the easiest thing to do is try and say, if they're joined together and act like one particle accelerating and moving at the same velocity and the same acceleration, let's consider them as one single unit, so one component. So I'll try and draw, put a uh, dotted box around there and consider the whole unit as one unit in its, on its own. Now I have to say is that total unit is like one single particle of 8 kilograms and it's being pulled by a force of 16 newtons. We have no, uh, no friction, so I can use F equals MA. I know that the force is 16 newtons and that must equal the mass of 8 times A. Solve that equation, I get A equals 2, so the acceleration is 2 meters per second per second. So now I know that the whole system is moving at 2 metres per second per second. So I can write that in as 2 metres per second per second. A double-headed arrow to show it's an acceleration. And that means that P is being accelerated at 2 metres per second per second and so is Q. The same because they're connected by a string. And the nice bit about considering there's one whole unit using this red dotted uh, line is that it means I don't have to worry about the tension in the string. It's effectively ignored because all I know is it's joining the two particles as one. So I effectively found the acceleration of P. Okay, so now to find the tension in the string, I can uh, look at either P or Q. But looking at Q, all I need to do is find the, uh, the forces acting on Q. Um, so I know that it's going at 2 metres per second per second, or accelerating at 2 metres per second per second. The thing I know now is that from Q's perspective, um, it's being pulled by a force of 16 newtons, and it's also got this force here, which is the uh, string down here, wherever the tension is in the string, is pulling Q backwards. And that's the force that Q is pulling it back with. That's how it seems to Q. So as far as Q is concerned, 16 newtons pulling it forwards and tension pulling it backwards. And it's always good in these types of questions to consider what's happening or what it feels like from the perspective of one of the particles. So now the force of, uh, what I do also know now is that acceleration of Q is two meters per second per second. Uh, we also know, uh, what we don't know is what the resultant force is on Q. The resultant force, which must be, if I look at it, considering going right as being positive, must be 16 newtons subtract T, because 16 newtons is pulling it that way and the T is pulling it that way. So now that's resultant force. And we also know the resultant force equals the mass times acceleration, because F equals MA. And the mass we know is 5, and the acceleration is 2. So I know that 16 subtract T equals 10 newtons. Rearrange that, I'll get T equals 16 subtract 10. So T equals 6 newtons. So that tells me the tension in the string is 6 newtons. I can do the same from P's perspective. So we look at it from P's perspective now. So first of all, we'll slide this over to show that we're just looking at P. If I just look at P, in theory, P 
P, from P's perspective, P has no other forces act on it apart from a tension in the string which is pulling it that way and it feels that Q is pulling it with some force. Well, let's see what happens when we look at it from P's perspective. Again, we know that F equals MA. We know the mass, which is 2 meters per second, and sorry, the mass is 3 kilos and the acceleration is 3 meters per second. So that's 2 times 3 is 6 newtons. There's a resultant force of 6 newtons on P. With that resultant force is 6 newtons, the only force pulling it is the tension. That means that a tension must equal 6 newtons. Well, that's interesting. So now we can see that P feels like it's pull, being pulled by Q by 6 newtons and Q feels it's being pulled back by P by 6 newtons. That makes sense. The string is transferring the force from P to Q. And depending on which particle's perspective you take, you should see the same tension. So actually to calculate this, it doesn't matter. If I want to calculate tension, I need to consider one or the other of the particles in the system and I'll, have to, I'll end up calculating T. If I want to consider the acceleration of the system, I can't look at, it's difficult to look at individual particles if I don't know the tension. So I look at the whole system to work out the overall acceleration. So if the tension doesn't enter into the question or isn't in that part of the question, look at the entire system. If you are including tension in the calculations, look at just one particle or the other. And in this case, you can see the calculation was easier for P because P only has one force acting on it, just the tension. Whereas Q, I had to take into account two forces and do the subtraction up here to try and calculate that.